Welcome to another live stream. In this live stream, for most of you guys, it's going to be a replay or video, but in this live stream, we are going to be working on this Primal Raminator, the world's biggest RC car. Uh, so they make a few of these. This one's the Raminator. This one here is the Grave Digger. They're the same truck, really, just different bodies and a few different bits, both the same size. So the biggest RC car in the world that you can buy. Right, this is the second attempt to try on this stream. I tried a minute ago, and it, I don't think it works. I had to restart it. But anyway, I think it's working now. So we've got you guys here in the comments. I'm going to try and get a few of your comments. I can't get them all because I'm going to be wrenching and waffling. So if you want a, the biggest chance of getting your comments seen to, then leave it as short as possible. If you put a big essay on there, then I won't be able to read it. It'll be gone off the, the, the screen before I get a chance. So the shorter you leave your comments, the more likely I am to be able to respond. But don't feel hard done by if I can't respond. Because there's often too many to respond to them all, especially if I've got to work on this. Right, let's get you back on the tripod. Right, this is how far we got to on the last stream attempt. I, I think I was waffling away to nothing, because nothing seemed to work. Right, we'll get you there on the tripod. Well, I can see now that it's working. On the other one, it was just a black screen. I don't know if it worked for anyone else. Right, here we go. Waffle, waffle, waffle. So I had this Raminator out. A few days ago and yeah I broke it so we'll get it we'll get it lifted up and we'll take it apart and hopefully we can fix it I'm already guessing I'm gonna know what's wrong with it so let's see if you guys can guess it's a bit of a weak spot on these it's the same bit that goes all the time if you're not careful so these things are massive man Can you guys guess what's wrong with it? <laughs> this thing is a beast. I mean, it's so hard on camera to tell how big it actually is. I mean, look, this is my workbench. And my workbench is taller than a normal bench. I made it so you can work on it standing up. And here's, like, my hand. And nothing you do with Schmeckle size. It's just a big wheel. <laughs> Best shoes in the world. Yeah, these are Amazon specials. Seven pounds. That's about ten dollars. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Where's my tripod gone? Here, here's my tripod. Let's get you on there. Bump, and we'll start taking this thing apart. Right, so I'm guessing the thing that broke, I'm guessing is the diff cup. It's a pain in the butt. They're not very expensive, but they break relatively easily. If you land these things on power, just like on a real monster truck, you land them on power, you're, you're tearing up the diff or the gearbox or something. And nine times out of ten is a diff cup. So I've got a spare diff cup here. I've got the heavy duty ones in this actually, and I don't think they're any stronger. So I'm just going to put a stock one back in. And I'm taking this with me on my next trip to the Isle of Man. I've got a little demolition project I've got to do in my new house. And... I'm going to try and do it with a raminator, see, see if we can smash it through some walls. What do you reckon? Is he going to get through some drywall? <laughs> It'll be a fun try, even if it doesn't make its way through. Uh, squid goes, good look, that's giant. It is giant. This thing is mahoosive. I was getting the wheels off to start with, just to make it a little bit easier to work on. Wheels off. There. I have been doing a bit of work on the real monster truck, so let me show you. I've been filming it as well, so there's going to be a video coming up. I'll be working on all these wheels. So this one here was leaking air out of the rim here. So I've, I've taken it off, resealed it, put it back on. Also, do you remember when I said about these wheel nuts? I know you Americans, you call them lug nuts. It's got a countersink, and this is supposed to go into the countersink of the wheel that keeps the wheel straight on there. So when they made these wheels, I actually made them a little bit wrong. So those holes down there, they didn't countersink them. So this was just skipping around, and all of these came loose. Pretty dangerous. So now look, I used this massive, great big, like it's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like eight extensions on there to make it long enough. Magnetic drill, that was clamped on there. So now, 
Look at that, it goes in the countersink perfectly. There we go, boom. And then we've got to do a little bit more work on here just to get it ready for the next show. So uh, yeah, there's that. All right. So that was the real monster truck. Now let's have a little wrench on the toy monster truck. So I'm gonna fire up the vac in a minute. A lot of you guys actually said, where do you get this from? So do you guys get these vacuums in America? Or is this just a British thing? So let me know in the comments what country you're from and if you can get these Charles or, or Henry's. You can get Henry's as well. The Henry's are red and a little bit smaller. This one here's a Charles and that can do water as well. I think the Henry can only do just dirt. Right, there we go. Hey, Tom says, first live stream watching. Hello, dude. How you doing? <laughs> Someone going only in Britain. All right, so we got all dirt in here, so we're not going to get those out. So I'm going to get my Charles. We're going to get Charles, so bear with the noise for one sec. We'll go in here and get all his mud out of here so he can get to the screws. Come on, out. That's on. That is that on. Right, so first things first. Some people take these axle housings off when they work on them. However, I'm gonna leave it on, I find it easier. Because if you take it off, you've got to take all the shocks off, you've got to take all the falling bars off, you've got cables going to it. It's a lot of work. So I find it easier when you're taking the differential out, just to leave it attached to the truck and just, just, just split the housing. I've done this a few times now, and that seems to me to be the easiest way. But there's, there's a lot of different ways to do the same job. But this is just a way that I find it the quickest and easiest. Hopefully, these are not going to be too tight. But I don't know what, I don't, you've got to really put a lot of Loctite on these because stuff comes loose. But for some reason, these bumper bolts, they always seize on. And I don't put Loctite on them anymore. I don't know why they always seize on. Well, it's coming out though this time. Hopefully they're all going to come out that easy. Yes. Normally when I work on these, that's the first, first thing that goes wrong. This piece is seized on. But that's off now, so that saved us a lot of time. Kev, where's Vinny? Oh, Vinny's gone racing tonight. Yeah, I was going to go, but I've got other stuff I've got to do, so I've got to miss this one out. Oh, that is loose. That done up again. Right, so I know we've got to get one servo off. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. So, oh, that fell off, so you can't lose that. Right, so I'm pretty sure this servo here has to come out. Uh, it's a bit tricky for me to get comments actually. Let's see if I can get this a bit closer to my workbench. And I can try and look over and do comments at the same time. It's a bit tricky. Things so big. Oh, that's better. I've seen comments better now. Well, people are saying, hey, Kev, Chris from Virginia. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? I don't know where the best camera view is. Uh, something like that. Something like that. I don't know. Right, servo out next. How expensive is this? So these are about, depending what model you get, you're looking at three to four thousand dollars. And then if you want to make it electric, this one here's got a brushless conversion kit in it. Uh, that's about another thousand, something like that. Uh, then my grave digger down there, that one there's got the Taylor 50 in it, and that one there is about a couple of grand for that engine. So I've actually set up a competition where you guys can win one of these. So I'll put that in the pinned comment. So go and check that out or and in the description as well. So you guys can be in with a chance of winning a brand spanking new one of these. Right, now we've got to take this off. Uh, probably. Uh, do I need to take it off? I can't remember. But we'll take it off from there. Not that. 
What brand is it? This is Primal. If you type in Primal RC, it's going to come up. I don't know what is going on there. Well, I'll put this off anyway. That is our fucking dangle there. Right, next up, we've got to take this thing off the top here. And... Uh, do I need to take that off as well? I've forgotten how much I've got to take off for this, because it's been a little bit... Oh. Dropping stuff here. Oh no, what was that? Right. That was that, that was that. That's got a little, right, that's got a top hat in there. There's block tarts holding it. Right. Next up, we've got to take this top piece here off. Can you fix my Clayton 4S version 2? Sorry, dude. I don't work on other people's RT. I've barely got enough time to work on my own. I could really do with employing somebody that's, that fixes the RC cars for me, so I definitely haven't got time to fix anybody else's. Right, let's get this iPad off of here. I'm going to put it down here. Oh, no, it's just turned off. So I'll put it down there. It might be a bit easier to get some comments. Is there much of an RC scene on the Isle of Man? Yes, there is actually. Quite a big RC scene on the Isle of Man. So many cool places there. We've got Alex who says, hello from Scotland. Hello, dude. How are you doing? You should review the FMS FJ pickup. I think I've got that. Can I get your free destroyed car? Uh, sometimes I'll do competitions where the destroyed car's on there, but if it, the car's destroyed, then I'm, I'll give the option between a brand new one and the destroyed one. Some people want the destroyed one because it's part of the channel. And other people want a brand new one because it's brand new. Party Nicola says, I have an RC car service. What for repairing? Good business to get into, dude. If you've got time and want to make some money on the side, we probably charge like $30 an hour working on these. So it's probably a good little business to get into. Right, that is that off now. When you're coming to the US? I don't know. Possibly this year. I might be doing a bit of monster trucking over there. Possibly. But nothing set in stone just yet. Right. Get one of these off of here. Then that can swing all the way over there and out the way. I'm trying to keep all my screws organised here because otherwise I'm going to forget where everything goes and then it makes it ten times more difficult to reassemble. And that's part of that. Right. What's your favourite newer RC? x max It's not that new though really, is it? <laughs> right, next up. So that's off. Next up. I've got to take out these screws that go all the way around there. Your monster truck is my grandson's favourite. Whee! Say hello to your grandson then, Scott. Right. What's your least favourite Traxxas? Oh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of two-wheel drive, so probably Bandit or Rustler, something like that. Two-wheel drive. Right, so I'm just going to slacken these off by hand. All the way around here, and then I'm going to get the other dugger on there and wind them out with that. I'm doing it by hand so that I don't strip anything. Right, I need a shorter one in there. When's the next speed run record attempt? Probably Rossa. I don't know what Rossa, there's normally three Rossa events. I'm probably going to go to one of them, but I'm not sure which one yet. I don't normally tell people which one, but the trouble is if I tell people which one, then that one will get super flooded and then it's difficult to get runs in when there's like loads of people there and everyone's trying to run at the same time. 
Antarctica has the best snow bashing. We, I do, I do enjoy snow bashing. I like snow when you get it every now and then, but if it was snowing for like months on end, I wouldn't like that. Yeah, you know, if you have like a couple of days a year of snow, perfect. I wouldn't want any more than that, really, personally. Nobody would soon wear off and get annoying. When are you going to put V8 motor in the infection? Oh! I'm waiting for a new engine to come. I'm not going to bother doing it with the engine that I've got because that engine sucks. So I've got a new engine on the way. It looks like a really good engine, actually. I've seen some videos of it running on YouTube. So I'm going to put that engine in. Nice shoes. <laughs> These are seven pound Amazon specials, $10 Amazon specials. I was using them for working in. They're good for getting muddy because it washes off easy. Perfect. We need to get into some of these. Little bit on the fiddly side. There's one more here that I've got to get out. Get them out. Yep, got him out. Whew. Is 50 spur 20 pinion good for X Max bashing? Uh, I've forgotten what I've got on mine now. I used to run 1850 on a 1600 kb motor, but I'm back to running stock motors now because it's quite difficult to get 1600 kb motors nowadays. So, well, I, and everyone bashes differently as well, so it all depends on your bashing style. So what I would do is, if you want to try it on high speed gearing, try it, but keep an eye on temperature. If it's not getting too hot, you're going to kill stuff. So if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to run. Why the name game over? Oh, because so often on the channel, when something gets broken, I sort of go, oh no, game over. So I thought game over, the name for the monster truck would be perfect name. Am I going to review the one eight lossy grave digger? Yes! When it comes, I've ordered it ages ago, but here in the UK, we always get everything late. Why is the ratchet so small? Because it's a little mini ratchet for working on RCs, that's why. Right, let's keep that there, out of the way. So, we've got two more bolts around the brake disc, then, then hopefully it's gonna split apart and we can look at the diff. Are you going to review the, do a review on the Radio Master MT12? No, I don't really do those sort of videos. My videos are not really how to and technical. My videos are more entertainment. So I did have one and it kept playing up. So I kind of threw it against the wall. So it didn't break, but Andy wanted it. So I let Andy have it. So, I might show it on the channel, but there's not going to be a review on it, and I can't get into that screw. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I tend not to do too much technical stuff. I, I try to appeal to a broader audience. And like, you know, if you think somebody that is new to RCs, he's not going to care about an MT-12, is he? Like that. There, for some reason, it's not going in. I'm gonna have to give it a bit of a wallop. Jason says he likes Andy's channel so far. Yeah, it's doing good for for a newbie channel. Been quite a lot of use for a fresh channel. I don't really shout him out too much because I don't believe shout outs work. I've shouted out friends before like a lot and it 
it appears, the more shout outs I give someone, the worse their channel does. And my theory behind that is, oh, got it, is that uh, if, if I suddenly tell you lot to subscribe to someone, you, you guys are going to go over there and just subscribe, because I've told you so. And then if you don't like the videos, you're not going to watch them. And then you end up with a channel that's got a load of subscribers and no one watches the videos. So that tells YouTube, if even the subscribers are not watching, why should they show it to anybody else? So I believe you are best off growing your channel organically. So make videos and YouTube, YouTube know best. They know who to show the videos to. They know best. So you're best off just letting YouTube decide who to show your videos to. And then people subscribe that want to subscribe. And, you know, I think that's partially why my channel was, was fairly successful. It's because I've never had any shout-outs. I've never collabed with bigger channels. I'm not interested, really. I just, I just want to grow myself. Oh, that is in there. Slowly grow. Slowly, surely grow. And just let YouTube show my channel who they see fit. diff out there. Well, I'm going to put a mark on here because you have to make sure you put the diff in the same way that it came out if, because you could put this diff in on that side the other way around and then that axle is going to rotate the wrong way. So I put a line on there that means that crown wheel goes on that side. I'm going to turn this light off over here because it's a bit bleeding bright. Out you come. We're going to get this on the bench and change the camera, camera angle in a sec. So that's the diff out. Put those shims back in there so we don't lose them. And then we get this on the bench. Right. Right. Get you there. I've just accidentally turned my computer off on the wall instead of turning that light off, which is a bit annoying because I was copying some files and now I stopped copying them. So I want to go over there and turn it back on in a sec because I've got to get those files copied. So you guys leave some comments and then I'll get back to those in literally like 30 seconds. All right, back in 30 seconds. See if you can leave some nice comments and see if you can see yourselves on there. Right, one sec guys, I've been copying a load of files and I messed up, I turned the computer off instead of the bleeding light switch. And it's important I copy all these files because if my computer dies, I've lost all my hard work. Uh, right. One second people, I will be back in one second. Right, sorted. Sorted. There we go, look, I'm just backing up all my work. So what I do when I make my videos, as soon as I finish filming, I put all my work onto my computer. And then, from there, I put all my work onto one of these little uh, USB drives, so everything's on there. And then I also put everything onto two external hard drives. So I've got one at home and one here at the shop. So if ever there's a fire or one goes wrong or something, I've always got multiple copies of my work because it's the worst when you do all that hard work and then you lose it. Are you a Lamborghini lover? No, not really. I mean, yeah, I like them, but I'm not a, I'm not a fanboy. Right. I'm running out of space here. Someone goes on about USA having a crumbling border. Oh, God, don't get me going on that. Same here, they're letting a load of illegals in, wrecking the country. 
So, too much for me. One of the reasons why I'm leaving. All right. I'm guessing it's this piece that's broken. You can normally pull that out if it has. And, yeah, probably will pull it out because it's really loose. Yeah, there you go, look. All right, stream keeps freezing up, guys. I'm not really sure why. I think we've got some issues going on with the stream. It keeps freezing. Maybe because we're talking about stuff we're not supposed to talk about. Maybe that's why it's cutting off. All right, can you hear me? Is it working? There's certain stuff you're not supposed to talk about on YouTube. That's why I've sort of done a Rumble account, because on there you can say what you like. <laughs> right, that on there, that on there. Someone moaning about political beliefs. Uh, I'll try not to talk about politics. I don't really look into it. But when something really severely affects your way of life, then it's more than just politics, isn't it? It's about actual survival. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're into. If it affects your life that badly, I think it's your duty to talk about it. Because if, if the evils get their way, life will not be how it used to be. And you'll lose everything, pretty much. So people need to wake up. So it's better to hear, hear the odd little nag about it than it is for it to actually happen and you lose everything, isn't it? All right, so let's get this thingy magic changed. Please make Summit 10S. Oh, dude, no way. I made it brushless and it just eats differentials. So it, it is no, <laughs> definitely not. And they're not an easy car to work on. I've done it to the X-Max, because the X-Max is easy to work on, and when you kill it, it's no big deal. All right, so we've got to get this out of there. But breaking the summit, pick to work on. Would you have Traxxas XRT or TRX4? Oh, it depends what you want to do, dude. If you want to crawl, obviously, TRX4. If you want to bash, obviously, XRT. Right, I've got silicon earplugs in here. That's why this is a bit tricky to get out. Right, we got it. I'm going to keep all that silicon earplug gunge in there. People say, oh, you're breaking it because you've got silicon earplug in there. So, oh, well, I used to break them just the same before that as well. Didn't really make much difference. But I want to get most of that silicon earplug stuff back in there, really. We're going to reuse this cog anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but let's get most of that back in there now, otherwise we're just going to get more grease on it while we're messing about with it. Get that in there. Right. WPL full upgrade. Oh, I don't know, dude. I've got so much going on right now. And all these sort of little cheap PRC cars, they're just a bit on the side. You know, focus is monster truck, raminators. I'm in the middle of moving to the Isle of Man, so that's all we focus. When it's all them little things, it can't sort of like little filler in things. So I might do one day, but who knows? Can I get one RC car? Oh, I can't get one RC car. Why not? When I was 10 years old, I wanted a Manta Ray, and I'd, for two years, I was doing jobs for the parents. And I saved all my birthday and all my Christmas money. And every time my brother had an ice cream, I was like, can you put the money in my Manta Ray fund instead? And in two years' time, I saved up for it and I could get my very first hobby-grade RC card. I was about 10 years old and I still got it. So I know exactly what it's like when you're a kid and you can't afford stuff, but you've got to find a way of doing it. You know, the way you've got to look at life, if you want something, you've got to say to yourself, how can I afford it? Not, I can't afford it. If you say to yourself, I can't afford it, then you've already given up, and guess what? You're right, you can't afford it. But if you say to yourself, how can I afford it? Now suddenly, you've opened up all the possibilities now, because now all you've got to do is figure out how you can afford it, and then you can. Because almost anything's possible. Your wildest dreams are possible. You know, so much more is possible than you can ever believe. All you've got to do is take action. And, you know, if you learn from somebody that's done it before 
then you can shortcut it a little bit, you know, save some time by going through all the mistakes. But I'm a believer that anything you want, within reason, you know, obviously if you said, I want Mars, that probably won't happen. But, you know, Elon Musk's trying to make it happen, isn't he? And look what he's already achieved. So, I'm a believer, almost anything you want in life, no matter how big the house, how many cars you want, Anything like that, you know, if someone else has done it, especially if multiple people have done it, you know, like if you want a mansion, for example, look how many millions of people have got mansions. And if you think about it, the only thing that makes them different to you is that they, they know something that you don't know. But the beauty of it is you can learn it. There's so many books out there, YouTube videos, online courses, it's all out there. It's all out there to learn. So if you want something as simple as an RC car, you, ca you cannot say to yourself, I can't afford it. it you, absolutely, you can afford it. you just got to find out how. So that is your mission. I said to myself, I wanted a monster truck. And, oh man, let me tell you, I tried so many different ways. When I decided I wanted to build one, I was completely broke. I had nothing. So I made it my mission. I said, right, I'm going to find a way of making money online. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I want to make money online. I want to be able to get out of bed, open my laptop, and do my work on the laptop from the comfort of my own home. Even if I want to stay in bed, I want to be able to work while I'm in bed and make some nice little passive income as well while you're sleeping. So, you know, you wake up in the morning, you look at your bank account, and there's more in there than there was the day before, and you've been sleeping. So everyone laughed at me when I said that was my goal, that was my dream. Everybody laughed, no, nope, you won't do it, you'll never do it. You're wasting your time, you won't do it. But, you know, I see thousands of other people doing it. So I thought to myself, well, if they're doing it, why can't I do it? We're all born knowing nothing. And everything we know is all learnable. So if somebody else can learn it, then so can I. And fast forward a few years, look, there's my dream. And so many people think that is an impossible goal. And in between, I even got that as well. And, and all these toys, all from just... Taking action, and the reason I'm coming in here is to get my brake cleaner, all from believing in myself that I can make it happen and that I can learn how. And then actually taking action, following through with it, and just trying different things. And out of every 10 things you try, probably all of them are going to fail apart from one. That's normally the success rate. And that's for, even with business people. You know, even if you look at Elon Musk and all the millionaires and billionaires. You know, for every 10 things they try, only one works. So don't expect your first thing to work. You know, maybe you go into affiliate marketing first. It doesn't work. Then you might try doing a bit of stock photography. It might not work. You might try starting up a window cleaning company. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you feel like you want to do. But the point is, you've got to try those 10 things to, to find the one thing that works for you. And everybody's different. You know, I tried all these different things that didn't work, and they work for other people, but they don't work for me. So, eventually, you know, the first thing that actually worked for me was eBay. So, as soon as I found something that worked, that you can make some money on, then you double down, you know. So, I made a little bit of money on, on eBay. So, then I was like, right, boom. Time to double down. Time to, whatever I'm doing, do it more. So I put even more work then into my eBay, done more products, more research, more learning, read loads of books, loads of testing. And then I've done over a million dollars worth of sales on eBay now. And you know, it's not even that much a million, is it? You know, you think in terms of big business, it's nothing, is it? It's nothing at all. Such an, you know, easy goal to achieve, really. I mean, if anything, you're aiming too low. If you're aiming to make a million, you're aiming too low. So if you're aiming just to get an RC car, dude, so easy. You might, it won't happen overnight. You know, it might take you a couple of years. It took me a couple of years to save up for that manta ray. Oh no, have I forgot to put that bearing on by waffling? I have an eye. Yeah, right, got to take it off again. No big deal. Point is, anything you want in life, within reason, you can have it. You just got to find a way of doing it. So try a different thing, see what works. And once you find something that works, double down on it. Go all in. Learn everything you can about the trade. And just keep going as long as it works, as long as you enjoy doing it. 
So then obviously the second thing that worked for me was YouTube. And, uh, you know, for me, it's just my dream job. I just get to play with these things, chat with you guys and make money by doing my hobby. I mean, this is perfect. What's your plans on moving? Well, I'm just doing it bit by bit, dude. Bit by bit. Every time I go over there, I'll take some more stuff. And then within the next few weeks, I will be there full time. And I'll be coming here just every now and then just to see friends and family. What's good to sell on eBay these days? Oh, dude, I'm not even going to say what's good on there because... Every time I say what's good to sell on eBay, then everybody copies, and then that product is no longer viable. I used to do exclusively RC, until I made a stupid mistake, and we do learn from our mistakes. You're better to learn from other people's mistakes, but you know, sometimes you do have to learn from your own mistakes. So I made a silly mistake, I built that eBay store up, I've done like a, bit, a, a million, Dollars worth of sales on that eBay store. Loads of good feedback. Loads of comments and everything. I made the mistake of sharing on YouTube what that store was. And what happened was everybody just copied the exact same products that I did and, and done it a bit cheaper. So I'm putting all the work in researching and putting the products up and everything. And then someone else comes along and does it a bit cheaper. The trouble is, if you're trying to be the cheapest, you're just competing yourself out of business. You're just going to go bankrupt. So I closed that store down and started another one and then sort of done anything. Anything that's got money in it, I'll do it. It doesn't matter what it is. RC cars, toilet brush, whatever. If there's money in it, I'll sell it on eBay. However, now I've kind of stopped eBay. I'll do a little bit just to... Because I, I do sell an eBay course where I teach people how to do the eBay. There's a link down below if any of you guys are interested in that. And it is a paid, there's a free course as well, but the one I think in the link must have paid for one. And it does come with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if any of you guys try it, whatever the reason, if you don't like it, you can get your money back. But i am started working on a new program that I've been building where I teach everything that I know about making money online. Every, everything that I know how to make money online from a phone the laptop. Noah in the house. How you doing, Noah? What do you need to get started on eBay? You can get started just with your mobile phone. That's all you need. Just your phone. You can take photos from your phone. You can make a listing on your phone. Everything. But... If you start getting into it, you are better off doing it on a computer. So either a laptop or a desktop, a Mac or a PC, it doesn't matter. You only need a cheap computer. It just makes it easier. And especially when you start selling more stuff, you want to be able to print out shipping labels. If you do it on the phone, everything's a little bit more clunky and a bit more difficult and not quite as quick, you know, as, as you start selling more stuff. So if all you've got is a phone, you can start. So what you want to do, if you want to start, and I'd say eBay is your best business to start on. You know, YouTube might be the dream job. But for most people, it doesn't work. Most people make no money on YouTube. There's millions of channels out there and only a tiny, tiny, minute percentage actually make any money at all. So YouTube, eBay has got a much, much better success rate. And you're going to see results a lot quicker. You know, on YouTube, even if it works, like Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast is like, I don't know, one of the biggest, if not the biggest channel there's not a music channel or something and it took him eight years to make any money eight years and he's the best so you know what chance has a normal person got like not much so ebay is a lot because you know on youtube you kind of your personality's got lots to do with it and if people just don't like your personality then you haven't really got much of a hope why is that not going back in Oh, so there you go, you haven't really got your face to it. I mean, you can make faceless YouTube videos as well. Right, that's it, that's that back together. You can make faceless YouTube videos where your personality doesn't come into it. So there's different ways of doing it, but it's definitely a lot 
more difficult to get YouTube to be successful. The only reason I'm doing it is because, well, because it works for me. And also when it comes to doing eBay selling, because I'm moving to the Isle of Man, I can't compete with people selling in England because it's going to cost me more shipping. So if you live on a small island, I would say eBay is going to be very difficult. But if we're in any main country, Germany, America, UK, Ireland, you know, any, any place that's got a bigger population. Isle of Man's only got an 85,000 population. So, and the thing is, if, if your English sellers can sell to the Isle of Man, then the shipping costs the same. But if you're selling stuff from Isle of Man to England, it's loads. Right, that is back on. Right, there we go. What, what are you guys saying? Do I get a perfect do I get a perfect pass servo for my Max version 2? Yeah, you can. I mean, there is a specific X Max servo now that I've got my X Max is I would say is the best servo to put into an X Max or a Mini Max or an XRT. It's that one there, high H speed. So if you look on eBay, I think they're on there. I'm not really fully sure what shops sell them. But the company that makes these sent me a couple, but they don't sell them directly. So, but that's the best server I've used in the X-Max because they go, uh, oh, pardon me, because they bolt straight in. Loads of torque, loads of speed, really good servo. Perfect pass servo is a, a normal size servo. So I'd say they're one of the best all round servos for normal size things. And they do work well in the X-Max. But you've got to put adapters in, you've got to cut the chassis a bit, and you've got to mess about with the servo horn. That H-speed servo goes straight in. The traveller goes, everything sounds lovely on the Isle of Man. Oh man, I've been there twice now. And yeah, love it. There's nothing, nothing about it that I don't like. What about Redfin when you move? Yeah, I'll still be going to Redfin's. I'm going to come back here to see friends and family all the time. So that's why I'm learning to fly. The goal is, is when I've got my own plane, then I can just fly from Isle of Man to UK and it takes an hour. But see, that's another thing that people say, oh, I can't afford a plane, I can't afford lessons. It's like, no, that's the wrong mindset. You've got to think to yourself, how can I afford it? So, you know, not, showing, not saying it to show off or brag or anything, but... You know, I'm looking to buy a plane. I went to look at a plane the other day, actually. An extra 330LX. It's almost brand new. It's only done 100 hours. And I was ready to wire him the money over from the phone. And then he sort of said he's not sure if he's going to sell it now or not. And then he said he won't know till January. And then come January, he said he didn't want to sell it now. So back on the hunt for another one. I'm tempted to get a brand new one, but a brand new extra NG, that's full carbon fibre, they're about half a million pounds, plus VAT. Oh. I don't know, maybe, we'll see. But you know, and anything in life, anything you want, you can have it, you just got to find a way how. Did you get your pilot's license? No, not yet. Do they have Isle of Man women? <laughs> of course they do. Why would they not? Apparently there's more women there than men. <laughs> Apparently. So I've been told. I don't know how true that is. Now it goes, what are they second hand? You can get a second hand NG for probably about 450 including VAT, something like that. How's the flying going? Well, I've had ten and a half hours, I think, now. So we're getting there. On my last lesson, we was practising, I think it was yesterday. We had a lesson yesterday, and we were just, just practising landings. So I spent a whole hour just doing, doing circuits, taking off landing, taking off landing, just keep doing it. And my first couple were a bit messy. And then towards the end, they got really good, actually. Should I get tractors to UDR? Yes, for scale, but no for bashing. Even though, for a scale rig, they are relatively durable.
Now we go, you're getting one like that. I want an extra. I don't know what, you know, I was going to get an extra 300 to start with because they're a little bit cheaper, but they've got 30 less horsepower. And that's the one, if you look on my main channel, the plane I went out in, that was a 300. But if you get a 330, they're the newer ones, they've got a little bit more horsepower, but they cost more, so. Claire will be jealous of you. No, she won't. She's married. You have to do a TT course if I see come, I have to, yeah. Do you like to play video games? Which one is one of your favourite? Not really. I'm not a gamer. I've got Beam NG that I've, that I've got a monster truck simulator on, so I do that sometimes. I've got Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I've been on it a little bit, but not much really. I mean, I prefer the real thing, you know, stuck on a screen, to me it gets boring. I've got my controlled helicopter simulators, but the same on that, it gets boring. I'd rather do the real thing. Still a wig, someone goes. I think we established that in the last live stream, if that was a wig or not, dude. Get a VR headset for flight simulator. Oh, uh, is it easy to set up? I was thinking about that, but I'm not very good with computers, so... People say to me, oh, you do YouTube videos, you edit, and you're not good with computers. I'm like, no, I'm not really, I'm just winging it. Now it goes, yeah, no, this one's the electric laminator. Andrew goes, nice truck, can't wait to get one. Oh, mate, these... So much fun, these Raminators and Primal Monster Trucks. It's like the most fun you can have with an RC car. I mean, you've got to be careful when you land them. If you land with a power one, you're going to rip apart the diffs and the, and the shaft in the transmission. It's cheap, but you've got to mess about doing all this, what I'm doing. I think, yes, it's probably like £15, $15 to fix it, but just a bit of a faff. And you don't really, unless you go really crazy, it's just little cheap things that you break. But they are heavy. If you break it, it's not going to be nice to carry. Do you prefer electric or petrol laminator? I like petrol. Monster trucks have got to make a racket. So for me, petrol all the way. I mean, my favourite practical RC car is the X-Max. I've got to make sure that goes on the right way round. Because every time I put that on, I put it the wrong way round. Yeah, so the X-Max is good electric because it makes it practical. But once you get to RCs this sort of size, they're not really practical anymore anyway. So that will go out the window. So you might as well have to maximum fun. If practicality has gone out the window, you may as well just have fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Alan goes, you'll be winging it in a real plane for sure. Oh, absolutely, I'll be winging it. Right, that doesn't go in there. These are going there. People need to read the chat, keep asking the same questions over and over. Yeah, I know. So that's why I try and answer the ones. I try and answer the ones where they're fresh comments. What is this Stampede video? Someone says, yeah, maybe. Any buggy racing content in the future? Yes. I've just got this look. The B7. I was supposed to be racing it today and building it today, but I didn't have enough time. I was doing other stuff. So I'm going to take this with me to the Isle of Man and build it there. But I don't really race these on the Isle of Man, so I'm going to be bringing it back here and racing them here. Len in the house. How you doing, Len? Oh, oh no, stop the stream. <laughs> Hello. Why don't you get a muffler for the laminator? People must complain. Oh, man, this thing's so loud. I want to make a muffler for it. I mean, I like loud. I mean, it, it does add to the fun when it makes a racket. However, the tailor is just so loud. It just hurts your ears loud. Now I go, it's taken two and a half weeks to build mine. Really, Noah? 
I built my 6.4 in one day and went racing at the end of the day. But I really rushed it. I, I probably didn't build it right. Hardcore, damn, that thing is here. Yeah, I know hardcore. I know on the video when I was trying to get you with it. It's bloody loud. When are you getting back on the YouTube, hardcore? Then just hanging out, spanking spammers. <laughs> when people spam, just give them a time out. If they keep doing it all the time, then you can block them. Right, that is on. And servo. That's got to go back in there. The falling bar can go back on there. See, I've done these a few times now. They're not too bad. And if I've got you guys on there, I can have a little waffle with you lot. Julian goes, Taylor, do make a muffler for the ruminator. Oh, I'll have to check that out then. I mean, I've got a, I've got a, a muffler on my lossy 5T that Taylor do. And it makes it a bit quieter, but it's still too loud. Ah, oh, hardcore goes, real work is kicking my butt. Oh, man. How long is that going to kick your butt for? Forever? You've got to have some you time as well. More to last than just working. I know, I know we all have to sometimes. Any more Max videos and new DR videos? Yeah, there will be, but I don't know when. Timothy goes, Traxxas or Armour. My favourite Basher, X-Max. My favourite Crawler, TRX4. My favourite Speed Car, Infraction. So I don't really care about the brand, I care about the product. Personally, I never look at the brand. Could not care less what the brand is, I only care how good the product is. Same when I, buy, when I buy a new phone. I don't care if it's Apple, I don't care if it's Samsung, could not care any less. Whichever one gets the job done. Uh, right. So that. It's supposed to be under there, so that goes in there. Talking to myself like a weirdo, and that probably should go on top like that. Yes, I am talking to myself like a weird weirdo. Don't worry about me, I'm just being a weirdo. And on you go, that underneath, and then that in there. You don't want to get banned from a skate park. I don't know if you can get banned. I mean, who's going to ban you? They'd have to put it in the bylaws, wouldn't they? Oh, it's hardcore. Hardcore knows all about the laws. Could they ban you from a skate park? I mean, I'm always courteous to people on skate parks. I mean, if there's people on the skate park, I, I won't play with the RC. If there's people on the skate park and they're sort of right down the other end, then I might ask them, say, do you mind if we have a little play here? If they don't mind, then I'll play, and if they do mind, then I'll go somewhere else, because I understand they're skate parks, not RC car parks. Sometimes it's got a load of kids on there, and they want to see the RCs go. But we always give priority to people that use the skate park what they're designed for, so I'll get a lot of hate in the comments, who should I boss you on the skate park? You know, well, my tax money more than pays for those skate parks, the amount of bloody tax I pay, so I'm using them. But at the same time, I'm courteous to those who it's for. You can't say fairer than that, can you? Can you put Max V2 in UDR, please? Max, what do you mean Max V2? You mean, you mean um, the speed controller? Do a remonate a sausage build. You know what? Rob from Isle of Man said I should do that. But I've got another sausage build coming up, actually. I want to make a crawler with loads of wheels and call it like a caterpillar or something. <laughs> and see if it's the world's most capable crawler. Because everything is sausage. Everything that you sausify is better. 
what I found. Then goes, I find skaters tell me the best jump setups. Oh, right, cool. Yeah, I mean, often if you get to the skate park and the skaters there, you say, do you mind if we have a little play? We'll keep out of your way. Sometimes they're like, oh, not really. And then you go, all right, fair enough. And sometimes they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about sharing. Will you do a demolition derby vid? What, real demolition derby or RC? At the Isle of Man Radio Control Club, they do destruction derby racing, so I will be giving that a go. Put that back on there. That's back on there. I've got a feeling this thread is about to go, because look, this design here is a bit crappy, really. It's not the best design. They do bend relatively easily. So, not a massive deal. I mean, you can straighten them out and you can readjust these, but... I don't know. It works. Nothing's perfect, is it? Think of iPhone 1. If iPhone 1 was perfect, then they wouldn't have iPhone 15 now, would they? Right, that is back on there. Oh, that's a bit loose. Let's do that one up. I think I'm really doing is put longer bolts for all of those because they're all on the risk of rounding off, I think. So I have to order up some longer bolts for all that lot. And then I've got two more screws here and they have to go... Right, where's the other? Oh, where's me? I need the, the longer extension bar. Where'd that go? Oh, where did that go? Oh. oh! I had that a minute ago. Where did it go? Guys, where did it go? That, it's one of these, but without the extension, it's just a longer one. Where's that gone? Kev, can you get TRX4 Sport? I've got one! I've got one up there, dude! I'm going to take it with me to the Man and give it a little play there. Where's that gone? What? Where's that gone? How can that be gone? I had it like literally 10 minutes ago and now it's gone. Right, well I'm not going to bore you looking for it. I can put those screws in myself later on. I'm not going to waste your time me looking for it. I can get one in with this one, but with the other one I need to pop a bar. I'll get one in. We can get the wheels back on. We can have it all looking complete again. I'll just do that last little screw up. In my own time. Time's precious. I don't want to waste your time. I'll get it in most of the way, but I just can't do it up. Yeah, we'll do that up in a minute. We'll do one up. That one's done up. Check your pockets. No, I, don't, I never put stuff in my pockets when I've got greasy fingers. Definitely wouldn't be in there. Uh, right. I'm going to work my way around these and make sure all these are done up. When are we going to see a slash again? Oh, at some point. Don't know when, though, dude. Uh, oh, pardon me, how rude. How big is the hex on the Raminator? 24 mil, I think. Is it 24? 25? 24, I think. Check under the table, yeah, it's probably under there. I'm not going to bother looking now. I can do it on my own afterwards. I don't need to waste your time doing it. Oh, hold on, is that? No, no, it's not that. What is that? Is that? Oh, I found it, dumbass. <laughs> found it! How are you? Would you be interested in a rebuild on my Nitro RC car, says the editor. Absolutely not! <laughs> we just spoke about... Oh, it isn't that one. Right, sod it. I'm not going to waste your time. Oh, here it is. It's on here. I've barely got enough time to work on my own cars, Mr. Editor. So I definitely haven't got time to work on other people's cars. If I did work on someone else's car, I'd have to charge like a thousand an hour or something stupid. 
is one of Tom's best used for making videos and stuff like that and other business things. If I'm fixing someone else's RCE car, I mean, my hourly wage will go way, way, way down. But, you know, really, if you're in the hobby, you should really know how to fix your RCs yourself. That's all part of the hobby. Right. I think, I think we're good. We'll get the wheel back on there. What have you been typing, Hardcore? <laughs> you typing work emails on, on the stream. <laughs> Everyone keeps saying when you move into the Isle of Man. I've answered that question so many times. But, uh, yeah, I'm in the process, dude. It's not like a switch where I moved. You know, I'm doing it bit by bit. Every time I go, I take more stuff from me. It's not like a switch, but like, that's it, I moved. So I'm doing it um, as we speak. Falcon says, smash the thumbs, guy. That's it, guys. Hit the thumbs up button. Show a bit of love. <laughs> Show some love and hit that thumbs up button. It helps the algorithm. Helps get the stream, get a little bit more viewage. Everybody wants more views. It's funny sometimes you get... Comments, someone going, Oh, you're only doing it for views. It's like, Well, duh. But why, why would you put a YouTube video up if you didn't want any views? Everybody wants more views. You wouldn't put it on there, would you? If you only wanted it for personal, you'd have it, you'd have it as unlisted or private. That car is big, I know, dude. Massive. Do you have a set time for your live streams? No. Either until the job's done or I'm fed up with it or well, I run out of time. There's no, you know, there's no set time. Can you put ATCC in the van later? Yes, you can. Let me show you. That one there is electric. It's got the, the fine design, is it called? set in there and I added a Hobby Wing Max 4 so it can do 12S this one. Uh, that one there is a Taylor 50cc. And then a bit buried here. But there's one down there. That one there has got the height output. Is it 45cc or 47cc or something? That's that one there. Then over here, buried as well, is the 80cc Raminator. That's got the Taylor 80 in there, look. It's got way too much power. It's ridiculous, that thing. But a lot of fun. So, there's that. And I've, I've been doing, well, have been doing some work on this jet here, but uh, not since the last update. All right, so I think we just got to get the bumper back on there. I think we're done. Why don't you put thicker gears on the Traxxas X Max? Uh, oh, on the 12S one, yeah, I will do on that one. Probably get some mod 1.5 or whatever they are, whatever they're called, whatever the bigger teeth are. Needs it really, doesn't it? Can you ride on the Raminator? Yes, you can. Maybe not do too much good on the old clutch and everything, but you can. Do you stream every Friday? No, I'll just randomly stream whenever I feel like it. If I've got to fix something and it's not part of a video, then I may as well do a live stream and then you guys can keep me keep me company while I'm doing it. And it's another video for the channel as well, isn't it? Right, that is that ram back in action. Right, we're gonna get a few comments. I'm gonna get a few comments in a minute while I drink my drink. Got a chicory there, such a good drink. This. Let me take my gloves off and everything, and I'll show you what what the thing looks like. Ah! 
boom, there we go, back in action. All right, clubbage off. And we'll do a little bit of waffling. Get this crap out of the way, get that back up there. And then we'll get you up here on my table. Put you there somewhere. Like that, and then we can have a little waffle. How fast can this RC car drive? Oh, the, the, the tyres balloon like a lot. So, 40 mile an hour probably tops. Will you ever take classic Manta Ray racing? Yes, I have done before, but not, not my old one when I was a kid. When I was a kid, look, the one that I built when I was 10 years old was that one there. And then that one there's a, well, that was a top force, but I made it into a Manta Ray because they're pretty much the same, just a modified Manta Ray. And then this one up here is a bog stock Manta Ray. And that is how that Manta Ray came when, when I first got it, but I've sort of butchered it up a bit because I was a kid and I thought I made it better. Well, part of modifying. How have you ever been to Dubai? No, I haven't actually. But um, yeah, tempted to go on a holiday there. Any progress on Mini V8? No, I'm waiting for a new one, dude. I've got a new V8 coming. Do you smoke? No, I don't. I try and look after my health. I remember your 80cc Ram as soon as you showed it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Most used tools, these ugly duggers. These are actually an impact wrench, so you can see that look. You've got to be careful though, because they're an impact. If you just hammer away, you're going to strip all your threads out, so you've got to be really careful. It then goes, what would you do on holiday? Is your job your holiday? <laughs> Probably make more YouTube videos. When will your rotary swap an RC car? Well, I've got a little rotary engine. The trouble is it sucks so badly, it doesn't even run. So it's pointless putting an engine that doesn't work properly into an RC car. You've got to have a good running engine first. Otherwise, you do all that work, it doesn't work. You do all that work for nothing. Greetings from Holland, says the cap. Hello, dude. So what have you guys been up to? Let me know in the chat what have you guys been doing today. Have you been working, bashing, going to school? What have you been doing? Is that a VF supercharger hoodie? Oh, yes, it is, actually. It is indeed. How much money does that monster truck cost? Uh, you're looking at about 200... Well, it's a bit more now. It cost me about $250,000. But since Rona, it's gone up. So you're probably looking at about 300000 now to build a similar one. And then on top of that, you need loads of spares. And um, going back to what we spoke about earlier, you can get one as well. Everything's doable. You just got to figure out what works for you and do it. We need a human-sized RC car. Oh, Raminator's getting there, dude. Just got done building a house. Wee, RC Smith, building a house. Wow. Uh, grass, FPV's been working with Italian. Do you think it's a good basher? Oh, yeah. I loved Italian. Really good RC. On my one, I put the Mojave chassis on it to make it a bit longer. I destroyed one of my rear tyres on my modded lossy Mini T. Oh dear. I ordered a, a 6S Big Rock today. Hey, epic, epic car they are. I love my 6S Big Rock. Woke up early and caught Kev. Hey from Oz. Hey, Daz, how you doing? Been sorting diffs out and sorting airsoft gun. We. Editor goes, do you want any help regarding videos? Uh, I will do at some point when I get settled in. I'll be looking for an editor, but I want an editor on the Isle of Man. So if you live on the Isle of Man and you're a good editor, then um, yeah, hit me up. Maybe have a go at editing one of my videos and then see what, see how it goes. But I want, I want someone from the Isle of Man doing it because it won't be only editing, you know, you have to come out and help film sometimes and stuff like that as well. You know, and you can sit down together and talk about how you want the video done and all stuff like that. 
I'm not I'm not a fan of remote work. I, you know, I don't believe work gets done when it's done remotely. It's better when you've got your team all together. What is a good first crawler? The RGT, have a look on Banggood. Is it possible to put two motors in Traxxas X Max? Everything's possible, dude. It just depends how much customization you want to be doing. BC goes, what are you paying? Well, it depends how good you are. There's not really a limit how much I pay. I mean, if you do a better job at editing the videos than me and it gets loads more views and loads more money comes in, the sky's the limit, isn't it? I mean, if you can push the videos further, make more money. So it depends how good you are. But if I'm going to employ an editor, he's got to be a better editor than me. I, w I wouldn't want to employ an editor and go backwards. So if I employ an editor, he's got to be better than me. So, yeah, you'll, you'll get paid based on how good you are. Sky's the limit. And how good you are depends on how many views the videos get. So, you know, if my views now say they average, I don't know, I'd say three, 400,000 views, say I've got a professional editor in and he could get me a million views a video, well, you can earn notes. Hardcore goes, counts me out then. <laughs> You're pretty good at editing hardcore. Come move to the Isle of Man. What's your favourite RC car store? Redfin Models. But the thing is, though, I do enjoy working on my edits. I love it. I love video editing. I really enjoy doing it. I do it in the evening. So I do my work here, then I go home. And then rather than just sit there relaxing watching TV, I'll sit there relaxing editing my own videos. I'd rather edit than watch other people's videos. So if I'm at home just doing not much, I might as well be editing, because I enjoy doing it. <clears throat> you know, I see a lot about people saying, like, oh, YouTubers, they get burnt out, but I can't see how you can get burnt out if you love doing it. How can you get burnt out doing what you love? I mean, I love wrenching on RCs and chatting with you guys. I love going out bashing with friends and having a laugh. I love filming. I love editing. I love, I love all of it. But, you know, I know a lot of people go into YouTube because they just want to do it for the money. But I think you're going into it for the wrong thing then, because you will get burnt out. Are you a workaholic, Kev, says the cap. Yes, I am. I spend every awake hour working. I wake up, I come here, I work all day. I go home, I, I edit until I go to bed. I literally, I eat, sleep and work. That is all I do. And, you know, if I want a new hobby like monster trucks or, or RCs or whatever, I find a way how I can incorporate it in the business so my business is my work. So that way I'm always I'm always working because I'm a workaholic. I'm always constantly working and I won't feel guilty when I'm just doing hobby stuff because I'm still working, but I enjoy doing it. Do you still sell on eBay? Not much now. Not because it doesn't work, but because YouTube is a lot more fun and with me now moving to the Isle of Man, it's not really viable eBaying from a small island because it will take you longer to ship, shipping will cost more and you can't compete with people on the mainland. So, no, not for me anymore at the moment. But once I start employing, once I start employing some people and get settled down, I do want to start off a really big eBay stores and really, really grow it into like a massive, great big thing because there, there's multiple millions to be made from YouTube, and from e well, YouTube as well, but eBay, I mean. You know, there's massive companies, like here in the UK, Argos is one of the biggest shops in the UK, they sell on eBay. Tesco's, I think, sells on eBay. All the biggest stores sell on eBay. So there's no limit how much money you can make on eBay. You can make multiple millions. So I definitely want to employ a, a team of people eventually. I'd love to talk to the tax man how to do it. You know, maybe I could have a hub on the Isle of Man that runs the eBay business and then possibly ship all the stuff to a UK warehouse and ship it from there. So that way I can compete on shipping prices and not get done over by the tax man. And a lot of people have a go at me, saying, oh, tax avoider. You know, I, I don't mind paying fair taxes, but what I've got a problem with is paying all these taxes for them to use our tax money against us and not get anything back. They're literally using our tax money to make the country worse. And that I have got a problem with. I don't see why I should be paying it. They're letting all these illegals coming in, crimes getting worse and worse and worse, the litter everywhere, streets in bad condition. You can't get seen to it at the hospital. Police don't come when you need them. Uh, it's just I don't see what I'm paying any tax for. I haven't even got any kids to go to school. You know, when, I, when I've got to go, if, if I've got to go, you know, for example, I had a big zist on the side of my head. 
And I went to the doctors to have it tight, taken off, and they're like, it's only cosmetic, we can't take it off. So I had to have it done privately. So, and then the dentist, uh, National Health Dentists, if you can even see one, they're not that great. So you've got to do that private. So what are we paying for? Paying all that tax money. Like literally, they, they take about 50% of my tax money away from what I earn. And then everything you buy, you've got 20% sales tax. When you buy a house, 10% almost is stamp duty that they take. Uh, then you've got fuel tax. You've got tax on other things. I mean, when you work it all out, about 75% of the money you earn in the UK is gone. Gone, just gone. And then what do you get? Nothing. How much horsepower does the monster truck have? It has about 1,400 or 1,500 horsepower. How's the Mammoth Works going? Oh, no, they're not sending it back. They wanted it back to see what the problem was. And, and uh, they're not sending it back. <laughs> Alex, I don't know why, but I don't want to charge for listening to you. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not boring too many people and I waffle on about taxes and stuff like that. But, you know, when something grinds on you, sometimes it's better to get it off your chest, isn't it? This is probably why you're moving. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, the first reason I wanted to move was I was fed up with the taxes. You know, like saying, saying this country was perfect, if you need a hospital and... You go there, you get seen too straight away. Like Claire. Claire's needed a hospital for a long time because of her back. She's waiting for years and years and years. What the hell are we paying taxes for? We're not getting a service. You're not getting anything. I mean, where's the money going? It's just bad. You think that they're taking corporation tax 25%. So every single business in the whole of the UK, pretty much, 25% 20, 20, of the profit they make is going straight to the government. Then when you get paid... If you're making any sort of half-decent money, 50% of your money is gone. Gone, wiped out from everyone making half-decent money. And then you go and buy stuff, 20% is gone again, 20% sales tax. And you don't get anything, not nothing, you don't get anything. It, uh, what, what are you getting? So I was like, right, sod this, I'm done with this. If, if it was like a perfect country and you get seen to when you need the doctors, when the police come when you need them, all the streets are tidy, there's no potholes everywhere, the crime's sorted out then fine, I wouldn't mind paying taxes. But no, you get nothing. You get crime. That's all you get. And taxes. So no, I was like, sod this. I'm out of here. Sod this. I've got to find somewhere where I can move to that is fair taxes. I'm not looking for zero taxes because I understand everyone's got to participate in societies. It's only fair. Everyone's got to pay for the system to work. But it has to be fair. And here is not fair. If, 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 if you don't want to work, if you want to sponge... If you want to come into this country on a dinghy and sponge and have everything for free, perfect country. But if you're hard working, you're just getting screwed over. Do not come to this country if you're hard working. You're just going to get done over. It's just not worth it. Not worth coming here. All you're going to get is crime, all your money taken away from you, everything expensive. So do not come here if you're hard working. Don't. So I was looking for places where... Yeah, hardcore goes first when Labour get. That's the thing. No matter what side gets in, it's going to be bad. You know, you, you vote in bad or bad. There's no good to vote for, really, is there? So you're stuffed. And the only good ones that are there, no one's ever heard of them, so no one votes for them. So they haven't got a chance of getting in anyway. So I was like, let's find a country where it's fair taxes. So I was doing my research, looking around, looking around, looking around, and Isle of Man was one that was sort of closest to me, really. That on the Channel Islands, and got fair taxes, so uh, then I went to Rossa, I met Rob from the Isle of Man, I've, I've had it, I've had it on my mind to go and check out the Isle of Man for probably the past five years, I've been getting fed up and wanting to check it out, and I met Rob from the Isle of Man at Rossa, we were doing speed running, he said he's from the Isle of Man, I'm like, wow, well, I've, I've, I'm like, you know, toying with the idea of checking it out and maybe moving there, and Rob goes, yeah, come over, come over, so I booked a holiday, checked it out, and I was like, yeah, man, love it, no litter, like one of the lowest crime places in the whole entire world. Um, everything's looked after. There's a sense of pride. The community look out for one another. Everyone's friendly. It is such a nice place. So I went there for holiday, checked it out. The minute I got off the ferry and saw the place, I was sold on the idea. I was like, no, this is it. I'm moving here. So came back here and then went back again to house hunt. And I said to myself, well, I'm going to look as I've got a week to look at as many houses 
that that I can look at and I'm just going to choose my favourite one. You know, it's not a forever house. It's just a house just to buy for now, just to get settled in to, uh, and see how I like it. And then, you know, my dream property, I want some acres of land so I can have my shop and a monster truck and a yard to play with monster trucks and everything all on one property. So I'll be looking out for something like that in the sort of future. Falcon goes, I can't stand people littering. Just why? Yeah, absolutely. Why? Why would you disrespect the place that you live at? You're living there. Why would you disrespect it? Why would you make the place you live crap? I mean, surely you'd want to make the place you live nice. But then you see some people's houses, didn't you? It's just absolute dump. It's like a bomb's gone off in there. So, I don't know. I guess some people just wired up differently, aren't they? Same in Australia. I wish I never moved here. Just bad. Oh, dude. Australia looks amazing. Amazing countryside there. Amazing weather. It looks like the dream place, but same as the UK and America. It's just going down the pan. It just, I hate talking about politics, but if it's ruining your lives, I mean, what do you do? Where is Max? I have no idea, uh, Car RC. I don't know where any of my friends are unless I'm actually meeting up with them. You're going to need like 20 acres then. Yeah, about 20 acres would be perfect. The sad truth about the world. The thing is, I watch a YouTube channel called The Nomad Capitalist. And he talks about how you can get out of this crappy situation and move to places where it's a lot better. So, you know, he says you want to go where you're treated best. And I absolutely agree. If the country you live in is treating you badly, if, if you can leave, leave. You know, I know sometimes it's difficult when you've got family, and I've got family here, so, you know, I thought to myself, if I learn how to fly, it's only going to take me an hour to get back here. So that's my compromise. I have to work harder, earn more money, learn to fly, buy a plane, and then I can go to where they treat you better, live a better life. You would get lots of space in Japan, less litter. Yeah, Japan's supposed to be really nice, isn't it? I live in California. Our taxes are absolutely ridiculous. Oh, I, know, I know people from California. Lovely place. Lovely geography. Lovely. It looks so nice there. You know, beautiful weather. And government ruining it. Just trashing the place. Sadly, that is the truth. Hey, Russell, I'll see you in the house. How you doing, dude? When's Russell Vid coming out? I heard about it. Uh, you never know. Sometime. What recommend? What upgrade would you recommend for the one six James E Revo? Oh, I've got one up there, and I don't know lipo probably. Australia is cooked. Yeah, my uncle lives in Australia. Beautiful country, but government are ruining the place. Awful. I mean, you know what it is? World Economic Forum. And I don't know why the governments around the world are listening to them. God knows why. What is your best RC car? Laminator! Switzerland, Kev. Uh, yeah, I've heard it's good there. Probably cold though, isn't it? <laughs> Alaska doesn't have taxes, yeah, but Alaska's cold. <laughs> Alaska's like America though, isn't it? So you, you still got all your state taxes, haven't you? All your federal taxes, haven't you? Does it work like that or not? Any news about the big RC jet planes? Yeah, my friend Steve's going to have to come over. He said he'll come over and help me finish that off. I mean, he's ready to start it now. we just got to finish off a couple. Let's just set it up on the radio. I think, I think that's pretty much done. I mean, pretty much got to put fuel in it, put the wings on, and it'll be ready to go. So, yeah. But I was concentrating on moving stuff over to the Isle of Man at the minute. So, a few weeks, we'll probably get back on it if Steve's about as well. Kev, go and have a meal and chill for a while. <laughs> Buy another RC car just for fun. I'm chilling, dude. But sometimes, we you know, when the country you love and you've grown up in there and you've, you've put so much money into it in taxes and all you can see is a place getting trashed, you know, it makes you angry, doesn't it? And people say, you, you, I shouldn't leave, I should fight for it. But, you know, what, what can I do? If you haven't got the masses on your side, what can you do? Only thing you can do is leave. RC Smith says, thanks for giving your time to talk. <laughs> thanks for listening, guys. Are you getting LMT Mini? Yes, I've got a couple on order. 
Stream put a big smile on you on my face. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. How's your son, Tomley? <laughs> I think Tomley's older than me, I think. Have you ever been to New York? Uh, no, I haven't, and cities don't appeal to me. I don't like London. Yeah, Revo, you should move. Move to the Isle of Man as well. I'm trying to get as many of my friends as possible to move over there. Are farmers uprising in UK as well? I think so. I'm not fully sure. The media won't say anything about any of it. wonder why. All you guys that trust the media, why are they not talking about what's going on with the farmers, eh? Ask yourself that. They only tell you what they want you to know. That is it. If it's twisted or truth or whatever, they don't care. As long as as long as they can program you, whatever their agenda is, they'll tell you. Anything that goes against it, they just won't tell you. Fixing it again. What a pile of junk. Go dear. Next speed run. When the weather gets a bit better? Uh, maybe another three months, maybe. Editor going about starting YouTube editing. Oh, so if you're just starting editing videos, then I won't have a job for you. You'll have to be better than me, dude. So my advice is have fun. If you're doing YouTube for the money, don't. Do eBay. <laughs> because most people don't make any money on eBay, on YouTube. It takes a very, very long time. Mr. Beast took him eight years. So if you're in it for the money, don't bother. If you're in it for the fun, absolutely do it. And if it makes money one day, bonus. Then go all in. But I definitely wouldn't start for the money. Really you organise a meet and greet? Not really. Uh, but if you go to the UK Monster Truck Nationals, the tickets have just gone on sale, by the way, guys. If you go search UK Monster Truck Nationals on Google, and you can buy tickets, and then you can meet me there. Someone goes, vote reform Britain. The trouble is, dude, not enough people are going to vote. So, sadly, not going to make much of a difference. What's up with farmers, says RC Smith. Oh, they're not happy how... The governments that are run by the World Economic Forum are treating them. They're basically putting them out of business. And you know what that means? No farmers, no food. So, you know, look at what Bill Gates wants to do with his food. Food. I wouldn't dare eat any of the stuff that he wants to make. Sod that. So, farmers are having an uprising, if whatever you want to call it. Orange truck next to the Okomo bogey. Oh, that is a Tamiya TT01. Lab grown food. No, thank you. Absolutely, BC. Absolutely. I don't want to eat any processed food or lab grown junk. I want natural, organic and natural. Especially when you're getting older. When you're a kid, you can probably get away with it. But as you get older, things are going to start going wrong. So you've got to look after your health. Exercise, sleep, eat well. And try and avoid stress as much as possible. That's what I've found out so far, it's what keeps you healthy. And if you do all that, you'll probably never catch any illnesses or any diseases, apparently. I'm not an expert, so I don't know, but... I mean, if ever I'm not sure about something, I always think to myself, millions of years of evolution, you know, our body's built on what nature gave us. And now, very recently, it's all this lab stuff and chemicals and things, and the body's like, what am I supposed to do with that? And it goes wrong, so... You will eat bugs. That's what Klaus Schwab says. Yeah, eat bugs. Hot that. I'm a vegetarian anyway, so I'm not eating any bugs. I want organic food. That's what I want to eat. Careful, Prime Minister. Hot that. No way. No way. Probably get murdered anyway if you if if you was a Prime Minister. I went against what the WEF wants you to do. Uh, oh, pardon me. I've got the RC virus, but I'm eating healthy. There you go. I tell you what, a lot of people don't like healthy food, but once you start eating it and and you cut out all the junk food, you'll end up liking the healthy food and not liking the junk food. If I eat junk food now, I'm not but And healthy food's delicious. Size matters caffeine. No, that is not caffeine. I'll show you what that is. That 
that's what it is chicory organic chicory the only ingredient in there is a hundred percent soluble chicory that's all that's in there it tastes a little bit caramelly coffee tea -y. It's a bit of a mixture between them all but some people love them some people hate them Nazri said i'm 20 and i've made five thousand on ebay good job dude that's only the beginning you can make so much more you're only on the beginning dude my advice is learn as much as you can and all the money you make put it back in getting more products and you can just keep doubling up and doubling and doubling and doubling oh F falcon says I i've got him on the chicory but he mixes it with coffee there you go. If you, a lot of people want to quit coffee. I used to drink coffee, but I drank so much of it. It used to make my heart beat funny. So I, I gave up the coffee. And I've been on this for the past few years. I think it tastes better. There's no dirty aftertaste. It's healthy. You can drink it all day long. Perfect. I mean, some people, they're like, meh, not sure. Some people absolutely love it. I've converted so many people. So many people have bought it. I, I recommend each and every one of you, if you like tea, coffee, anything like that, hot drinks, Get yourself one of these and try it. And 50% of you are going to be hooked. That's all you're going to drink. eBay made me 40,000. Hey, well done, dude. Yep, easy. 40,000 on eBay, easy. Easy peasy. Keep putting your money back in. Keep doing what you're doing. Double up. Do what's been working. You know, whatever's been working, double down on it. And what's not been working, go less on it. Focus on the products that make you the most money and try and do similar products, you know. So, there's, sky's the limit. The sky is the limit with eBay. And the other good thing is with eBay, saying you want to do YouTubing, that's what I did. I had a successful eBay store already, so I spent two hours a day doing eBay and not the rest of the day to spend on my YouTube channel. And, you know, YouTube takes up so many hours that it's very difficult to do it as a as a little part-time thing if you've got a full-time job. So if you can have eBay, money coming in, and you've got all the time. And then you can spend as long as you want on making a YouTube channel work if that's what you want to do. That's what I did. Will chicory wake me up in the morning? No. However, a coffee drinker needs coffee to be normal. If you don't drink coffee, you're normal all the time. So you don't need to be woken up. You just, you're going to be awake anyway. So a coffee drinker needs a coffee to be normal and a non-coffee drink, a non-coffee drinker is normal anyway. So what you'll find is if you give up coffee, after about a month, you won't need it anymore. Addiction will be gone and you'll, you'll be awake anyway without needing coffee. So give it a go, dude. I mean, you can do what, uh, what's his name on there did? Just mix it 50-50 with your coffee. And then just do it less and less and less. And then eventually you can go full out chicory. I'll just give up coffee instantly and just went straight for the chicory. Did you take Promoto out? I did, Russell. Why didn't you come? Not trying that eBay seller, maybe YouTube or soccer. But at the end of the day, do whatever makes you happy. Try a lot of different things. And whatever works, double down on it and give it your all. That's what I would say. But just be careful on YouTube. A lot of people see Lambos and things and think, oh, yeah, I'll smash up a few X-Maxes and I can buy my own Lambo. But it doesn't really work like that. There's a lot more to it on YouTube than what you first think. I spend about 16 hours a day on my YouTube channel. I just never stop. Most of the money I make goes straight back into the channel. So and I'll probably put 100 grand into YouTube before I really made anything back at all. Please do your eBay seminar, Kevin, soon. Well, I've got an eBay course. I've got a free one. I've got a paid-for one. So paid-for one's got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it. And if you don't like it, you can get your money back anyway. No questions asked, whatever your reason. You know, if you suddenly decide you want the money so you can buy pizza, then you can have your money back, whatever the reason. Don't care. Just 30 days. Or if you don't want to put any money in, then I've got a free eBay course as well. If you go to the main channel, on the end screen of every video... There's a little picture of me next to my Lambo. And if you click on that, it's a, it's a little video series, a little free little eBay course that I made. So watch those videos, get going, get going on eBay. And then if you make some money on there and you decide to want to do my paid for course, then you can learn all the things on there that, that I've learned because I teach everything. So, or you can learn it yourself, but if you learn it yourself, it takes longer. So all depends what you want to do. Money, my, money I make goes into savings. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, I, I can't really give money advice. 
everyone's got different money advice as well, but legally I can't do it. But personally for me, I don't like money in the bank. If you look into something called a bail-in, bail-in, type that in and have a look. That will scare you. So, yeah. I would rather put money into different investments that are safer. I mean, money just... I mean, even if I don't do a bail-in, uh, inflation's going to wipe away your money anyway. Inflation's way higher than what the interest rate is. So money in the bank is just gone, you know. So I'd rather buy stuff that can make me more money. Invest in things. But each of own, everyone's got to do what makes them happy. You know, some people say it's a bad idea to pay your mortgage off. And you're better off to use that money and put it into a business. Which, yes, if it works, good idea. But... If it doesn't work, you run the risk of losing it all. So I'm a believer of no loans, no debts, own everything outright, have minimal outgoings. And then if anything was to go wrong and you can't work, well, at least your outgoings are really low. So savings is good. Well, you know, everyone's different. Everyone's different. you got to do what, what's right for you. I don't really like money in the bank. Obviously, when you're saving up for something, you've got to have money in the bank. But... I'm not a fan of having lots of money in the bank. I'd rather have property that you can rent out, for example, or, or anything else that makes you more money. So, no, money in the bank, uh, no, nah, to me, it's too risky. They could do a bail-in, gone, and if I don't do a bail-in, then inflation will take care of it. So, where do you get this knowledge financially from? Oh, just, just years of looking into it, really. I mean... I mean, if your ultimate goal is to make maximum money, I mean, the more money you want to make, the more risk it's going to be, right? So if you want to, like the property game, you can make a ton of money with property, buying industrial units like this and renting them out or houses and renting them out or apartments and renting them out. You can make a ton of money. And if you want to leverage the banks and make maximum money, then you get a loan and you get like a buy-to-let mortgage and then you rent that house out to somebody and then that money, what they pay you to rent the house, that helps pay the mortgage. And then you use the collateral from that house to get another mortgage on another house and then you do it again and you just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. So you can just keep building up your portfolio and at the end of the day, the banks own pretty much most of it. Uh, but eventually, one day, they are going to become yours when you pay the mortgages off. So that's the quickest way of doing it, you know, or putting all that money into your own business and growing it. But it's more risky. You know, what happens when there's, when they put interest rates up, you know, and rents drop and and your mortgage becomes more than what the rent pays and you've suddenly got like 20 houses in your portfolio and the money's not coming in, the banks are going to want their money. They're going to repossess, house gone, boom. So risky business. So you can do it that way, obviously. And a lot of these real estate people that sell real estate courses, they try and sell you that idea because, because you know, it does work, but only really in a rising market. So I like the idea where... You buy it, you make less money, but I'd rather buy it cash so you own it outright, and then you rent it out, and then every all the money you get is yours. But the difference is you might only have one property, whilst if you get mortgages, you could have like 10 or 20 properties, but you're risking it. So you got to end of the day do what makes you happy. So what I want to do, that's my next step, is set up another business, another limited company. Uh, Lamas is about stocks. Yeah, yeah, I think stocks are good if you get the good ones. But my next thing what I want to do, I want to set up a new business and then I want to do that property game where you get a mortgage and buy a property, rent it out, then get another, uh, you know, what I just spoke about, do all that, but do it in a separate company. So that way I've got all the stuff I own. I've got the monster truck, Lambo, house, unit, whatever else. I own it outright, no debts. That's mine. That's all cleared. That belongs to me. Nobody can take it away. And then, then I'll, I've got a new business and I play that game where you just get as much debt as you can and get as much property as you can. So then that way, at least I can make maximum money if it works and say it doesn't work and you lose it all. You only lose that business. You don't lose all your stuff that, that's like your own personally. So that's that's the way that I look at it. But everyone's different. So you've got to do whatever, you know, you've got to look at your risk, see what risk you like. Favourite casino game? Uh, a roulette and blackjack. Uh, so my, my thoughts on stocks is buy stocks that are doing well and hang on to them for the long haul. That's advice to me, not advice to you, by the way, because I'm not legally allowed to give you financial advice because if I do and you act on it and and it goes wrong, then you, maybe you could sue me. I don't know. So anything I say is not advice. It's just what I'm doing. And, you know, you should get your advice from, uh, you know, your own research, really, or get financial advice from a professional or whatever you want to do, basically. You know, I'm just saying how I'm doing it. 
And, you know, and I'll say how I do it, because if you guys want to follow, you can. I'm not saying you should, but you can if you want. Not trying to be rude, but do you go to the gym? Uh, no, I've got, I've got a, a few little resistant bands and a few little dumbbells and stuff, because, you know, if I'm sitting there editing a lot, it's not healthy just to sit down all day. So I get up every hour and just do a bit of moving about. Keeps you healthy. So I'd say you've got to exercise, eat healthy, sleep well, and try and be as stress-free as possible and live as natural as possible. And I think that will, in my opinion, I might be wrong, but, you know, in my opinion, that's what, what's going to keep you healthy the longest. You know, and every, all the money and friends and everything in the world doesn't mean anything if you haven't got your health. So health's got to come number one. Most important thing, health. Second family. Uh, money, you just got to make enough to pay for what you want to do, really. You know, people say money doesn't make you happy. I mean, if you've got, as long as you've got enough to, to survive, you don't worry about money, then any more money, I suppose, is nice, but it's not going to make you that much happier, really. But if you're worried about money and you're worried about paying your rent, of course, it's going to make you miserable, isn't it? It's going to make you stressed. Have you acquired your pilot's license yet? No, it's been such bad weather here in the UK that they've cancelled so many lessons. So I've done about 10 hours so far. Health is wealth. Yeah, there you go, Steve. Do you have a 3D printer? I did get one, and Minnie's got it. Do you still talk to Jake Billing? Uh, every now and then. I keep We keep saying we've got to go out for another RC bash. That's it. FPST, whatever your name is. Money doesn't solve all your problems, but it solves your money problems. There you go. Where do you get your drill bits from? I got these from Amazon, and these are the Presto Hymox. They're supposed to be for stainless steel, but oh my God, they're so good for like everything, pretty much. Expensive, but they're good. And if you know how to sharpen them, they'll last you years. Can you try the T-Max? Uh, maybe, 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 maybe. The cap says he's got to go to bed. I'm out. <laughs> good night, dude. Uh, have you ever go-karting? Yes, and I had the lap record at my local go-kart track at Caxton, which is long gone now. But I did have the lap record there at one point. Do you have a girlfriend? No, I do not. Can you be coming to Rossa this year? Yes, Eddie, I am. <laughs> and I want to do Santa Pod again. Are you, are you up for coming to Santa Pod, Eddie? If we, if, we, if we plan another Santa pod with some speed cars, you up for coming? I mean, when, when we went last time, because it was the first time, I didn't know how many people I could bring. I didn't want to uh, take the pee and, and bring too many people. But, um, uh, you know, if every time I bring like, an extra person or something to see, see how the feeling is. But you're welcome to come next time if you want. What's the weather like? Do you know what? The past for, for UK, it's not been bad. There's been a lot of days where it's been sunny, actually, recently. Have you ever had any break-ins in your workshop? No, not in this one. I have in my old workshop. So now I am completely security obsessed. I've got two security firms keeping an eye on this place. Uh, I've got two different CCTV cameras and I've got a whole load of other booby traps that I'm not even going to say on here what they are because if someone wants to break in, they're going to know. But everyone laughs at me that I'm just completely over security conscious because I've been broken into before and it's horrible. So I'm completely over the top. Double doors, triple doors, not mad. You, you see, if you see my key ring, it's just mad. But, you know, I'm not going to show you exactly what I've got on there because anyone that wants to break in is going to give them a head start, isn't it? But literally, if someone even comes near this building, it sends warning alarms to my security firm and to me. And if anything dodgy is going on, they'll literally be here in seconds. Probably a minute, two minutes, I'll be here. So, yeah, I don't think this place will get broken into. There's quite a lot of crime going on in this area, but... Uh, yeah, they, uh, they won't know what's coming to them and they, if they try this place. They'll get a dog unit, they'll get everything come over. You should convert Vaminator to a crawler. That is a video idea. Good to have security, yes. And a good friend of mine actually said, security-wise, you've got to put it to whatever point makes you feel comfortable. 
because it's, it's easy just to think, oh, I won't get done. And when you get done, it's horrible. My old workshop, it got broken into. They stole all my snap-on tools. Awful feeling. You know, I didn't even want that unit anymore after that. It makes you feel like your space has been invaded. It's awful. If any of you guys have ever been broken into at home or in your workplace or something, not a nice feeling. So oh, I've just gone completely over the top. Complete overkill. I mean, I'm, in, I'm insured anyway. If anyone breaks in and steals all my stuff, I'm insured. But it's just not a nice feeling. I'd just rather they didn't get in to start with. Nitro crawler, good idea. Yes, Jason Redfin Models has been working on it, actually. Quick question, can you put two motors in SCX24? I'm sure you can, but I wouldn't know how. How's life, Kev? Good. I'm moving to the Isle of Man, so... Yeah, really good. Really good. You thought about making a Land Rover 90RC. Uh, 910, um, 110 maybe. Have you ever been in an F1 car? I haven't, no. It'd be fun though. Snap-on tools are worth a lot of money. Yeah, I know. And they weren't even insured, so they were gone. Horrible feeling when you get broken into. So I'll, I'll say to anyone, just, just make your stuff as secure as possible. In the Isle of Man, you don't really have to because there's not really much crime there, but... You know, here in the UK, we're quite close to London. Crime is rife. And police half the time don't bother coming, so you've got to pay. That's another thing. I've got to pay. I've got to pay for private security when the police should be doing the job. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, it's all right for me because I can afford it, but a lot of people can't afford it. So, do you like bullies, Kev? Absolutely hate bullies, and I love it when bullies get owned. I lo absolutely love it. There's no need for bullying at all. People that do it are just absolutely disgusting. It's just no need for it whatsoever. But the thing is, bullies normally got really bad lives. You know, their life just sucks. They've got such a crap life. They think that by bullying somebody else, they can get them down to their miserable level and make their miserable life not seem as bad. But, you know, rather than to go out and make their own life better, it just seems easier for them to bully. So, yeah. And the thing is, bullies only have other bully friends and thieves and all that. So, you know, like attracts like. You're just going to have other friends that are horrible and nasty. Sounds like you Brits need a revolution. Yeah, maybe the whole of Europe. The whole of the West. He's talking about bullies, a dog breed. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm not really a dog person, really. You know, if it's a dog that's friendly, it doesn't smell, it doesn't slobber and it doesn't jump up at you, then yeah, I like it. But if it's one of those that stink and they're all slobbering everywhere and they're jumping up and you're like, no, get away from me. Not into all that. Off with their hands for stealing. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> That's what Mike said. Sounds not good in London. No, London is not good. If you want to get stabbed, maybe. A lot of stabbings going on there. Can't wait to get out of the place, I'll tell you that. I don't live in London, but I'm sort of on the outside of it. Max is an RC car bully. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> How many farts do you rip <laughs> per live stream on average? Depends what I've eaten. On this live stream, none. Greetings from Germany. Hello, dude. How you doing? Do you live close to London? Yeah, about 40 minutes away from London, roughly. I never go, though, because I hate the place. But I don't like it. I mean, it used to be a really beautiful, nice city. But it's getting trashed just like other cities in the West. You should manage to share on the Vaminator, yeah. How can there be stabbing in the UK when they're trying to ban pointy knives? Well, do you think the criminals care? They still have them. Chicory tea is a bit strong for me. Oh, well, what you got to do is put less in. I put one spoon in for this whole big cup, and this is like four cups worth in there. And I put four spoons in there. So if you have like a normal size cup, maybe you only need like a quarter or half a spoon. So try, try making it a little bit less strong.
Greetings from Florida. Hello, dude. Have you ever had a T-Max? I haven't. How heavy is that cup when full? Uh, it's still all right. It's quite holdable. I bought another one. This is 900 millilitres, so nearly one litre. It's over a pint. If I put a pint in there, it comes to about there. And I bought a bigger one. There's two litres. When that thing's full, you can barely hold it. You've got to have two hands on it, and it's like, that's too much. But this is perfect. Where do you buy chicory? Amazon. Just type in chicory. There's two different types that you should get. This one, or oh, there's another one with a square lid. I'll show you. Yeah, that one or that one. Don't get anything else because everything else has got other shit mixed in with it. Oh, stuff mixed in with it. <laughs> Boop. Uh, so yeah, get one of those two and make sure that the only ingredient is chicory because a lot of them have got other stuff in them as well. And then they're not going to be any good. How many nitro RC cars do you have? Oh, I don't know. RC Smith says I'm ordering, ch ordering chicory. Yep, everyone, I would say order one first if you like it. If you like it, you, you, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to challenge all of you to get a chicory. I'm not sponsored by these, by the way. I just love it. It's just a product that I stand by. So get yourself a chicory and see if you like it. Do you own your own apartment? I, I've got a house, not an apartment, dude. Glad you exist, Kevin. Hey, thanks, dude. B7 build video coming. Yes. I'm going to be building this soon. I was, if I would have had time, I would have built it today and taken it racing, but I've got so much stuff on. Are you moving to Douglas? No, not Douglas, but I'm not too far from it. 10 minutes. What is chicory? Is it plant-based? Yes, chicory is a plant, and I believe they used a root. This is 100% soluble chicory. So what does it say on there? Our soluble, oh, I'm dyslexic, by the way. So if any of you guys got any excuses of why you can't do your own business, um, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm dyslexic and I still built a successful eBay store. So uh, if you've got excuses, excuses are for losers, basically. Uh, so our soluble organic chicory drink is made from root of the chicory plant, which is grown to organic standards and without the use of artificial pesticides and fertilizers. The root of the plant is carefully cut, split, dried, roasted, extracted, and spray dried, dried using processes that ensure your chicory drink can be certified organic. The result is one perfect coffee substitute that is naturally caffeine and gluten free, suitable for vegan diet. Boom. How, how good of a read was that for a dyslexic person? Give me a, give me a, give me a little score out of 10. How, how good was I reading that for a dyslexic person? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was too bad. My spelling's another matter. I can't spell anything. Whenever I type something on the computer, the spell checker's going mad. What GPS do you use? I use the Dynamite one, but the Sky RC one. That's oh, so almost 9 out of 10. 10. <laughs> you guys are too kind. 10 out of 10. 8, eight out of 10. 11 out of 10? Really, Samba? <laughs> <laughs> Show us for a screenshot. All right, there. All right, everyone, screenshot. Right here. <laughs> screenshot that. They're, they're the two you want to get. Don't get anything else, only these. They're a different brand. This one here, the granules are a bit bigger. This one here, the granules are a bit smaller, but they taste exactly the same. I can't tell any difference. See, the same on that one, look. It just said on their chicory root. So if you want to screenshot that as well, look, you can. That comes out, all that stuff on there. Same on that one there. It says on here to make it one or two heat teaspoons per cup. I find that way too strong. So a normal cup, I'd, I'd start with half and see how you like it and then put a bit more in. Then put a bit of milk in if you want, a bit of sugar. Same as you'd make an instant coffee, really. Kev, the new chicory spokesperson. <laughs> I should be sponsored by him, shouldn't I? Do you immediately shim the diffs on the new armor crater? No, although people say to me I should. Uh, I'll just let it rip and then worry about it when it breaks. Do you like FPV? I want to get into it, but I haven't yet. What's your opinion on Abzima? Good cheapo beginner RC, but probably that's about it. Uh, 
Corolla says he's 15 and he's planning to open a model shop when he gets older. There you go. If you've got a dream in life, make it happen. Everything you want to do in life, you can make it happen. Do you use regular milk or oat milk? I use regular full fat milk. Hey, AJ goes, hello from Isle of Man. Hey, <laughs> maybe we got to go bashing together one day then. You can show me around. Do the grains dissolve? Yep, as soon, instantly, instantly dissolve, instantly. You, you, the minute it gets in contact with the tiniest bit of water, it's straight away dissolved, like instant. Just got back from hearing around the UDR. Hey, those UDRs are epic. I've got to get, got to get mine out soon. When are you going to take out your car show MP10? Well, I took out uh, the, um, the used one just to get the hang of it. So hopefully soonish. What is FPV? Oh, what does FPV stand for? I don't actually know. What does FPV stand for? Russell will know. Russell RC will know. He's into his FPV. What does it stand for? Yeah, he said, I'm going to get you to fly my quad next time. Oh, thanks, dude. Well, I've got an FPV V1 here, and I wouldn't mind getting a DJI one. First person view, surely. Yeah, probably that then. <laughs> Did you move to the Isle of Man? <laughs> I'm in the process, dude. I've got the house. I've got it all decorated. I've got it, you know, I'm starting to move stuff over. So, yeah, I'm in the process. Not fully moved in just yet, but I'm in the process. First person view, there you go. There you go. Other YouTube races on the card. None planned, but yeah, I'm open to do more. Bigger shop on Isle of Man. Uh, yes, I, there are some shops there that I'm going to look at next time I'm over there. And uh, yeah, we've got, well, ideally, I want to get. Some acreage. I want to have like have my house, uh, a nice shop, and a bit of land all on the same site. But I couldn't afford it without a mortgage. I don't want a mortgage, so I got a normal house instead. And I want to get a like a like a shop like this one here, but it's not it's not going to be on the same site. And then while that's going on, and while I'm saving all that tax money that I keep giving away to our corrupt government, I can save up for my dream house. And then, I, and then I can either rent out my old house or sell it or whatever. When you go in crawling again? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got any crawling dates planned. Orange Stadium truck between uh, Rustler. Orange. Oh, that is a RC10 GT. And I've just started making some brand new bodies. And I've got a couple of bodies from Rochester RC, actually. And I'm going to restore that and make it into like what they used to be. Hey, Daniel from South Africa. How you doing, dude? Any update on the FTX ravines? Not yet, dude, but they're going to be a centipede. I might even add more to it, but I want to make the world's most capable crawler. So my idea is making it really long because everything is sausage seems to be better. Speed cars, off-road speed cars, bashers, everything. The longer you make it, the better it seems to get. So I'm just going to make a really long crawler and just put wheels all the way along the whole thing. What's the Traxxas 3S Rally car? I don't know. I've never had one. I made the best SX24. Hey, nice one. Please take a seat. Oh, I'm going in a minute, dude. I'm getting hungry. Can you re-upload the pub live stream, please? No, there's a lot of bad words in that one. A lot of swearing. <laughs> Stempy was in on that one, and he's always he's got a potty mouth. So um, no, I've got it set to private. That video it's still on there, but it's set to private. What's the RC with the wheel hanging off? Wheel hanging off? Oh, that is an associated MT8. One of the worst RC cars that you can get. 
awful. Which is funny because the MT-10 is amazing. Are you buying a Ultimate? Oh, I've got the X-Max. I've already got it down here, look. Got the Ultimate X-Max. Oh, actually, I was going to fix that on this live stream. But I forgot and I was waffling. Yeah, I've just broken the bumper on it. You a lager drinker now? I don't really drink any alcohol, really. It's not good for you. It's not good for work, it's not good for your mind, it's not good for your body, it's not really good for anything really. I mean, to me, you only do alcohol if your life's a bit dull and you want to numb your life. I don't know, it just seems a bit pointless. I mean, if you've got a good life, you do stuff that you enjoy doing, surely you, you want to have your brain fully there, not be all dumbed down. But, you know, once in a while it's probably all right, but, yeah, nah. I used to drink, but then I had ambitions and drink and ambitions don't really go together. Have you owned SCX-10-3? No, I haven't. I should really get one. What's the worst Armour RC car? Oh, AS ones. Any of the AS ones. Not a fan. What do you think of Tomley's new beast? Uh, oh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. What's he got? Do you think the Traxxas Ultimate is good? Yes. I, it drives really nice. It's got a better servo. It's got metal steering and the new tyres. But however, the, the links, though, they're a bit weak. I broke them already, so I'll put plastic ones back on. How much does your lossy cost? What lossy are you talking about, dude? Best upgrades for a Traxxas Max. Ah, pretty good stock, really. I mean, maybe the front bulkhead's a bit of a weak spot. I think Martin put a on a vital on whatever you call it, a metal bulkhead on the front, and it made it stronger. Well, I've been happy with mine, really, how it is. Is DRC a good brand? I don't know. Do you like T-Max or no? Uh, never had one, so I don't know. But in the T-Max days, the Savages were always more durable, so I was a Savage person. And all the people that had T-Maxes kept breaking them, and all the Savages were always a lot more stronger. When you get in the jet out, probably in the summer, dude. Mostly Cowley says, I'm off. Yep, yeah, I'm off as well in a minute, dude. We'll just have a few more sips of the chicory, a little bit more of a waffle for you guys, and then, oh, burp, and then uh, that'll be it. What do you think of Armour Typhon 6? Says, yeah, good for a basher, not for a racer, though, really. I mean, you can race it, but for, as a beginner, but. What supplier are you using to get this excellent stream? Oh, I'm just doing it off the phone. Just, just off the normal YouTube app. I'll just hit the little plus button at the bottom and go live. How's Lambo? Yeah, just sitting there doing nothing in the winter. I don't want to take it out when the roads are salty. A bit like the haters. <laughs> hey Kev, how's it hanging, says Jim's RC World. Good, good, how are you? Tomley, $5,000 mega truck. Check it out. Yeah, all right, dude. I'll have a look. Uh, update on Andy Landy. Yeah, he's at my friend's at the moment. About to have work done. On a new chassis, new engine, roll cage, better suspension kit. I just want to turn him into something pretty epic. Restro says, morning all. Would you choose Armour, Creighton or Traxxas Sledge? Ah, oh, I don't know. Both got pros and cons. Uh, don't know. Pretty 50-50 really at the moment. Uh, some people are saying they want to see my, my um, plane. Uh, so I've got one plane there. So that is a beast. I've always wanted one of these ever since I was a kid. Well, not a kid, but when, when they came out and I couldn't afford it. And now I can afford it. They stopped making them. So this one here, that one came up on... Um, my friend Steve found it. So Martin, that was Martin's plane and he sold it to me. But it's a little bit tacky. So then I wanted a mint one. And this one here is almost pristine. And someone said they wanted to see the propeller. And the propeller is... Up here somewhere. There's the propeller look. 
So to get an idea of the size of it, I don't know, where can we put it? It's quite big. If I put it on the floor, it comes up above my knee, look. There's my knee. And the propeller comes there. Pretty big. Pretty big. Uh, it's like the length of my whole arm, pretty much, look. Yeah, it's the length of my arm. Mahusiv. And there's the... Oh, hold on, I'm going to lose that if I chuck that bit out in there. Put that there. There's all the wings for it up there. Uh, I'm going to build this on the live stream. And I'm going to build that on the live stream as well at some point. So I did do a live stream before building a Tamiya. And you guys liked it. That was that Tamiya truck up there. Paul goes 27 by 10. I've got no idea what it is. It probably says it on there. I don't really know anything about planes. Does body pop off on XRT? Not as bad as the X-Max, I've found, but it still does. Don't bash them, Kev. Well, the, the scruffy one I'm going to have fun with. And with the, uh, with the immaculate one, I'm just going to hang it up on the wall and have it looking nice. Are you going to get another real monster truck? Yes! I want to take mine to the Isle of Man and use it for YouTube content and special occasions. And then I want to get another one. Same sort of spec, but a little bit narrower, the same as Monster Jam, because my truck is 10 inches wider than a Monster Jam truck, but it means that you can't put it into a shipping container. And I would like to have a truck that I can ship around the world to do shows, you know, like wherever. So I could make mine narrower or build another one. So I like, might as well build another one, isn't it? <laughs> what do you think of Traxxas Stampede? I've never had one. Jerry goes, awesome show, very informative. Hey, thanks, dude. <laughs> Can you list some facts about your forklift, please? <laughs> really? I don't know anything about forklifts. It can lift... Uh, I think it's supposed to lift two and a half tonnes, but it can lift more, actually. I've lifted way more than two and a half tonnes with it. But when you, when you lift stuff that's too heavy, like I try to lift the whole monster truck with it, it just tips forward. It can lift the front of it with the little wheels on. Um, but that's like with, the, with it there, I lift it on the axles and it's there. So if I could find a way of lifting it there, it would probably lift up, I don't know. I don't know how much it would lift. So there you go. There's all the stuff on the forklift. If, you, if, you, if you're a forklift fan, I don't know anything about them. The only reason I got it is because lifting stuff for that, like these wheels. When I was working on these wheels, I had to keep knocking them down and standing them up and everything. And I can, knock, I can knock it over, but I can't stand it up. It takes two people to stand it up again. So I was, using, I was knocking it over, doing all the countersinking in there, and then using the forklift to stand them up again. Also, putting the engine in, because I couldn't really find an engine crane that was suitable for doing it. So I used the forklift to put the engine in. Also, when we do the shows and I've got to load the tyres up onto the trucks, it's just easier to do it with a forklift. When you get deliveries coming, like a crate comes with the engine and axles and stuff. So if you're messing about with these things, then super handy. I don't know how I ever lived without it. So I built, I built the whole truck without one. And then I put the engine in with that. But apart from putting the engine in, I built the whole thing with, without it. And well, it would have been so much easier to have that. <laughs> Can you show your monster truck helmet? Uh, oh, not really. It's... It's there, but it's all wrapped up and stuff. I can't be bothered to get it out. But it's a carbon fibre one, look. Yeah, look there. Yeah, I can't be bothered to, to dig it all out. <laughs> yeah, so I've got some TRX4Ms here, look, because you guys said you wanted to see it. And I've got the, the new long wheelbase SCX24 as well. So, yeah, I, I raced this a little while ago. So this is a second-hand car that Mick built for me, so I've practised with that. And then that was going to get raced, but because it's a limited edition, I've only made 200. I'm going to leave that as a shelf queen, but instead I've got the newer, latest one now, which is that one there, look. Mm, what's this? Switch. Yeah, so Mike Craddock actually started building this, so we just got to put the engine in there and the servos and everything, and then, yeah, race it soon, I guess. Oh, uh, on this, uh, 
that one there is the one that we made six S. I tried to go over seventy mile an hour. Trouble is though, the tire rubs on the swing arm there, look, and then the motor seized up. So I've got a new motor. We're going to put Castle motor in it, and I've got all these GPM upgrades here and a longer swing arm. So with this longer swing arm, there's more room there for the tire. So if it expands, I need to find three mile an hour. Then we can break the UK speed limit with that. So that's another little project to get on with soon. Oh, by the way, if all these RCs that you've seen behind, you can win those in a competition as well. Whoever wins those gets all of them, all five of them. Not, not, the, not the associated, but you get the X-Max, uh, the Armour, Infraction, TRX4, MT10 and the Lossy Promo 8. All brand new. I've had them out of the box just to show, show people in the video, but they've never been used. All brand spanking new. So if you click on the linky with the competitions, you could win it, possibly. Can you try a 50cc engine on X-Max? Oh dear. Are you getting hungry, Kev? I am getting hungry because I've not really eaten much today. So I'm going to go and make some food in a minute. Have you been watching the latest Monster Jam? Awesome. I watch a few Monster Jams. I don't get much time to watch TV really because I'm always working. Or playing, working. It's both, isn't it? I do it both at the same time. Best 2S RC batteries? Oh, I don't know, dude. There's a lot of good makes out there. Gen's Ace, uh, Onyx. <laughs> I don't know, there's loads of makes out there. <laughs> Russell RC goes, it must be curry time soon. Oh, man, I'd love to have a curry, but not tonight. Do you still have mini e Revo? Yes, hanging up on the ceiling up there somewhere. There. Uh, there. <laughs> Can you do time lapse off the scale buggy build? Uh, no, I'm, just, I'm probably going to film it normally, not not do a time lapse. Did you see Cletus McFarlane with a load of those RC bikes? Yeah, I know. He had, he had loads of them, didn't he? I saw that, yeah. Does Max do mountain biking? Uh, I don't know. He's got motorbikes. I don't know if he does mo mountain biking, though. What is better, Gen's Ace or Onyx? So I've had good results with both of them. I'm leaving. Need to go to sleep. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving as well in a minute. Can you make Traxxas Max video? Uh, I'll, try and, I'll try and not be... Too repetitive if I can. Do you own a gun? No, not allowed in the UK. People ask me what is my take on guns. It's like if you're living in a high crime country, it's probably better to have guns so that you can defend yourself. Like, you know, you guys in America, there's a lot of crime, but at least you're allowed to defend yourself. I was here in the UK, we've got a lot of crime, and you're not allowed to defend yourself. Uh, so I'd say if you're in a high crime country, like UK or America, I would feel a lot safer if I could have a gun. And I, and I would have one if I'd be allowed. But in the Isle of Man, where it's so crime-free, it's better to have no guns. So that is my take on guns. You know, if, if you lived in a high crime area, like in America, and, and you've got a farm and you're not allowed to defend yourself, that'd be pretty scary, wouldn't it? So, Chicory probably cold now. It is cold now, but it still tastes good. What is the next best uh, after X-Max? Uh, what, for bashing, that same sort of category? Probably, I don't know, Sledge, Creighton, Talion, something like that. You could have an airsoft gun. Yeah, I know I could, but it doesn't really interest me. You're an amazing man. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. <laughs> Are you going to review Arm on Mojave 4? Yes, I already have, dude. If you look on the main channel, there's a video of it. You can drive it on two wheels. It's so It's so much fun. 
Right, guys, that is it. I'm going to... All the viewers are already dropping off because I'm waffling on too long. I'm getting hungry. So I will see you guys in another live stream maybe tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Tomorrow evening, maybe. We'll see. Right. All right, guys. Uh, take care, and I'll see you soon in another live-o. Bye-bye.